everyone in this video i'm going to be comparing the batman standalone films of the x-men slash deadpool franchise i'm gonna not be talking about joker or justice league or batman v superman or catwoman any of these movies that are about members of batman's rogues gallery or ensemble films that feature batman looking only at the movies that have batman in the title so that includes the 1966 movie the two tim burton films batman forever and robin and then the christopher nolan dark knight trilogy the matt reeves batman movie and then three different shorter animated batman movies with Batman Mask of the Phantasm, Batman and Mr. Freeze Sub-Zero, Batman Beyond Re Return of the Joker, and also the Lego Batman movie. So we got 13 movies that we're looking at today for the Batman franchise. And then we got 14 X-Men and Deadpool films, including, of course, Deadpool and Wolverine, which just came out recently. First of all, let's look at the highest Rotten Tomatoes score for each franchise. What's hilarious to me when it comes to Batman is that actually Batman Beyond Return of the Joker has the highest score of 100%. You heard me right, higher than Batman Begins in the Dark Knight. Pretty funny, because honestly, more people know about the Dark Knight than Batman Beyond Return of the Joker. I think it's a great movie, but it also is an adaptation of a TV show that came out a long time ago. Whereas the Dark Knight, obviously made a big impact and then when it comes to the x-men franchise the highest score is a 93 percent for logan so batman's gonna win this round next let's look at the lowest score for each franchise with the batman franchise unsurprisingly batman and robin has the lowest score of only 12 percent we look at x-men dark phoenix has the lowest score of only 22 percent so x-men does win this round next let's look at the average score when it comes to these batman movies the average is 77 then with x-men the average is 68 batman is a higher average so it wins this round next let's look at how much of a gap there is between the lowest and highest score with batman it's a pretty big gap 88 between 12 and 100 and then with x-men 93 to 22 gap of 71 so x-men does win this round meaning going into the final round things are tied so we're going to look at my personal opinion which franchise do i prefer and to me this is really interesting because if you think about it with batman you have all these different versions of the character that are in their own universe their own continuity you have the adam west version and that is in its own universe and then tim burton's movies are in their own continuity and while batman forever batman and robin on paper are technically sequels to batman 1989 and batman returns you have a few characters that return but they feel so different in basically every every way you don't really feel like they're in the same continuity as the burton films it feels like they're in their own universe and then of course christopher nolan's dark knight trilogy is in its own universe the matt reeves batman movie is separate from the other ones then you have batman mask of the phantasm and mr freeze sub-zero which are set during the time of batman the animated series whereas batman beyond return of the joker is set during the time of the batman beyond tv show which is set after batman the animated series so then lego batman movie is separate from the other batman movies this is different than the x-men franchise where all the movies are technically held together by continuity but a pretty weak one that's rather messy there's a lot of things about it that don't make sense just take a moment to think about the fact that from first class to dark phoenix there's like 20 30 years that pass between these two movies yet yeah, think about the way characters like magneto and beast or charles xavier look in dark phoenix compared to first class they're supposed to be decades older than they were in first class but you look at these characters and it does not feel at all like they've aged 20 30 years magneto should technically be like 60 years old when you look at the timeline but yet you see michael fassbender 
in the Dark Phoenix, and it does not look like he's playing 60-year-old Magneto. It looks like Magneto's still in his 30s or 40s. And then you think about what's in X-Men Origins Wolverine, it doesn't fit in with the rest of the movies. The idea that Mystique and Charles Xavier grew up together, that does not fit with the original X-Men films, because when you look at Rebecca Romaine's version of Mystique, you don't get any sense whatsoever that her and Charles had this past together. Similarly, when you think about Sabretooth's portrayal in X-Men Origins Wolverine, it doesn't make sense with the way Sabretooth is shown in that original X-Men movie. So really, the best thing and worst thing about Fox's X-Men movies is always that Fox has always been more concerned about doing a whole bunch of different things rather than having their movies actually fit well with each other or be held together by a continuity that makes sense. So you get movies that are great that feel different from other comic book movies like Logan or the Deadpool films that are not the same as other comic book movies. But the trade-off that comes with that is that the timeline, the continuity is never made any sense. Now when it comes to the quality of the movies, I enjoy a lot of the Batman movies. I think that Batman Returns is a movie that has good things about it. It definitely has Tim Burton's distinct style to it. I think it works as a Tim Burton exploration of free, lonely weirdos. Danny Elfman, of course, does a great job with the score. Michelle Pfeiffer gives a good performance as Selena Kyle. I like the scene where Bruce and Selena are at a ball and realize we've been dating as Bruce Wayne and Selena Kyle, but fighting during night as Batman and Catwoman. But there's a lot of issues with that movie. Similar to Batman 1989, it feels like Tim Burton's much more interested in Batman's villains than the character Batman himself. Because of that, Bruce Wayne has no development in Burton's films. In both cases, he shows up during the opening scene, but then disappears for like 20 to 25 minutes so he can establish other characters. Also, I've never found Max Shrek to be that interesting of a character in Batman Returns, because he's just so one note to me. Oh, he's just a generic evil businessman. Also, uh, the movie overall is just too dark, weird, and gothic for my taste, because you have Penguin portrayed as this disgusting sewer monster that's living with penguins. When he dies, there's all this black fluid coming out of him. He eats a fish, bites a guy's nose off. Uh, so it's odd to me is who he sets up this very dark plotline about penguin trying to kill all the firstborn sons of gotham but then that's resolved very quickly and we move on to something totally different going back a minute to the gothic stuff you have a version of catwoman that eats a bird in one scene licks batman also you have a version of batman that seems to have no problem whatsoever with killing seems really nonchalant about it to the point where he tortures a guy with his car and then straps a bomb to a guy's chest kicks him into the sewer we hear the bomb explode and batman just acts like it's no big deal whatsoever we even see him smile <laughs> so overall batman returns not a movie i've ever enjoyed that much and then of course batman forever is not very good it's not as bad as batman and robin but i don't actually think it's good when it comes to the 1966 batman movie it's not one that i've rewatched anytime recently it's a movie that you can definitely have nostalgia for if you grew up with the 1960s show but if you're someone who didn't grow up watching that show the movie's probably going to not work that well for you. It's going to come off as pretty dated, a product of its time that hasn't really aged all too well. Then I think the Christopher Nolan Dark Knight trilogy is really strong. I mean, I think Dark Knight Rises is not as good as Batman Begins or The Dark Knight, but I still think it's good. I like all the shorter animated Batman movies. I'm a fan of the Lego Batman movie. When it comes to the X-Men franchise, I enjoy quite a good amount of them. I think X-Free was a very disappointing end to that original trilogy. X-Men Origins Wolverine, very bad. 
I've not seen Dark Phoenix or New Mutants. I don't like Apocalypse because it just feels generic to me. So when it comes to which franchise is more consistent quality-wise, with Batman, you have four of these movies that I've not rewatched anytime recently. Batman 1966, Returns, Forever, and then Batman and Robin. When it comes to the X-Men franchise, you have two movies that I have not seen. You have Apocalypse, X-Men Free the Last Stand, and X-Men Origins Wolverine that I have not rewatched anytime recently. So I would say that on a quality level, I've always found the Batman standalone films to be more consistent than the X-Men films are of varied quality. That'll be it for now.